This question deals with a medical student volunteers to have his lung volumes and capacities measured for his organ physiology lab class. He is connected to a spirometer containing a known concentration of helium. He is instructed to breathe several times until the helium has equilibrated between the spirometer and his lungs. He is then instructed to exhale as much air as he possibly can. Calculations are made to determine the amount of air remaining in his lungs, which is called the, and we have the different options. Now there is two ways of getting to the right answer here. First of all, he says the question says that he is instructed to breathe several times until the helium has equilibrated between the spirometer and his lungs. He is then instructed to exhale as much air as he possibly can. This is the key statement here because if you exhale as much air as you possibly can, you are pretty much um, expiring beyond, you know, beyond your normal tidal volume. So whatever is left in your lungs is going to be a residual volume. So that's one way of getting to the answer, which is going to be residual volume. Another way of uh, getting to the right answer is I think it's also important to understand this point of view because this kind of deals with the physiology of the spirometer. Now imagine that this is you and you are blowing air into the spirometer okay and the spirometer is kind of measuring that air that you breathe into it and you can pretty much calculate any volume in the lungs except residual volume how would you measure res residual volume that's why the, the process that's mentioned here with the helium equilibrating helium has equilibrated between the spirometer and the lungs so helium you can measure so initially let's say you had 100 helium 100 mercury of helium in, in the spirometer. So you let the patient breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out until this helium has equilibrated. So let's say now you measure your helium. You know that initially it was 100, now you have 80. So your helium has dropped. So now you can tell, now you're asking the patient to maximally exhale and the patient maximally exhales and you measure that the helium is going to be 80. So you, what happened to the rest 20? The rest 20 became the residual volume inside this patient's lungs. This is the process that they're talking about. So this is not a direct way how a spirometer can measure residual volume, but this is a very effective way of how residual volume is measured. So that is another way um, we can get to the right answer other than the fact that he maximally expired. Like what if they didn't talk about the maximal expiration? What if we had to, you know, kind of guess from the procedure? So let's read the question one more time. So what happens is he's connected to a spirometer containing a concentration of helium. He's instructed to breathe several times until the helium has equilibrated between the spirometer and his lungs. He's then instructed to exhale as much air as possible. Calculations are made to determine the amount of air remaining in the lungs which is called the residual volume.